be left in the cold this winter, impacted by every swing in political action, depending on relatives, the government, or anyone else for your future. So let's go through those 10 steps today. And um, I'll tell you, you know, kind of my take on it. So number one step is learn a new skill. One of my friends, um, he actually, he started out, and let me just make sure that it's streaming well. Okay, good. So a friend of mine, he started out, and originally when he started his business, um, and so he, uh, he, he started out, originally started doing electrical work. And then he transitioned from electrical work to AC work because he saw that uh, some of the work was seasonal. And then he started digging holes for a living. And I thought, this guy is digging holes. He bought one of these machines, and he literally digs a hole in the ground. And the reason why he bought the machine was because people were charging him so much money to dig the holes that he bought the machine himself. And so what he did was, like I said, he started out as an electrician. Then he learned AC. And then he learned how to dig holes. And when I say holes, he was digging lines in the ground to run pipes and electrical wire and things like that in the ground. Well, when he started digging holes, it turned out that uh, the people were charging him $30 a foot. Once he bought the machine, then he could turn around and charge people $30 a foot. Well, does anyone have any idea how many feet that machine digs in a minute? It digs about a foot a minute. So essentially now he's charging people $30 a minute because that's how fast the machine works. So... What did he do? He learned a new skill. Now he's making about 1800 bucks an hour digging holes in the ground. So first thing I say to you guys is learn a new skill. I met another guy on one of my vacations when I was in, I think it was Costa Rica, when I was on vacation. And, I, he, you know, we talk about what we do. And I'm a, I'm a contractor. And so he goes, yeah, I used to be a contractor, but he got tired of all the, the people complaining about their paint, their floors, the issues going on, um, not being happy with uh, how they did the job. And so, you know, he got, he got tired of dealing with that. And he said he decided to go from construction to selling dirt. And I said, you sell dirt? And the guy said, yeah, I sell dirt. He goes, because guess what? People don't return dirt. And he also gets the dirt for free. Because what he would do was he would go out where people were getting the dirt and instead of them paying to haul it, he would go and agree to haul it for them for free. And then he would turn around and resell the dirt to people who needed it. And guess what? Uh, the funny thing is, like he said, people don't return dirt. If they want to return it, they got to bring it back to you. And that's likely not going to happen. I see someone in the chat. So they, that's what they actually do. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying. Uh, but learn a new skill. Number two, incorporate yourself. I can't stress that enough. In the book Rich Dad Poor Dad, which I recently referred to a friend of mine, it, it, it explained this concept to me a long time ago when I was just, I think I read it when I was like 19 years old. But it showed a chart that if you're an employee, um, and we all know, if you're an employee, you get a check. But before you get to spend the money, the government takes out their taxes first. So you earn your, your money, then they take out taxes, then you get to spend what's left over. If you are a business... You actually, you get your money, then you spend it, and then you're taxed on what's the difference. So number two, I would say, is incorporate yourself. Number three, do your research. Find out what opportunities out there fit you guys. Find an organization. Explore how to profit from your hobby. Um, maybe I don't know if I've shared this with you guys in the past, but I have a son, and uh, my son, he... Uh, he got into a situation recently. I talked to him. What is today? I talked to him like three or four days ago. Uh, but my son, he's he's 20 years old, and he lives in Tampa, Florida. And so he uh, he he parked his car in a spot, and his car was towed. And um, and then on another occasion, he ran a red light. And so he knows he you know he he can't call me for that. He he called me and asked me, and I said, look, you just got to pay those bills. So he was making all these funny videos on Instagram and stuff like that. And when I when I last spoke to him, I go, how's the videos doing? He said, Dad, I had to stop making videos. He bought a beat machine, learned how to make beats, and he started selling beats to people through his Instagram and made enough money to pay his his ticket from his towing and offset it to paying his bill from, uh, uh, from running the red light. And so, you know, we're talking about, uh, yeah, Paige, I know. Everyone, everyone says I look young. Let's, we, won't, we won't get into that right now. We'll talk about it another day. But, yeah, so he, uh, 
he actually learned how to profit from his hobby. And so you guys could do the same thing. Um, I tell people that stuff all the time. In fact, he actually works at this restaurant in Tampa where he learned, uh, you know, he's he has a personality, so he's, he's pretty, you know, he's like me, he's outgoing, he's an extrovert. And so now at, he's actually learning... Uh, they train him to be a trainer at the restaurant, and so as they open the new stores, they're paying him $1,000 a week to go around and train people, plus per diem and housing and everything else. So if he, I, I tell people this because I know teachers that are making less money than my 20-year-old son, and so he learned new skills, and he went out and found industries where he could leverage you know, his abilities, all right? Number four, get in the game. You can't watch from the sideline. In order for um, you to be one of us, you got to stop watching and participate. We already know life rewards the doers, not the admirers. So for the fourth thing I want to tell you guys is jump in the game. Number five, reduce your expenses. Your fears are reduced significantly when one, you know that you can afford to fail, and two, you feel that you know how to do your job, task, business. I'm not saying live frugal permanently, just during your growth and development phase. And as you see the quote from Mark Cuban, it says, it doesn't matter how you live, it doesn't matter what car you drive, it doesn't matter what clothes you wear, the more you stress over bills, the more difficult it is to focus on your goals. The cheaper you can live, the greater your options. And this is coming from Mark Cuban, who's a billionaire. I mean, if you go back and you look at his story, he slept on his couch. And that's why a lot of people, they say, well, oh, there's these rags to riches, or these guys are, and, you know, but if you look at Elon Musk, they worked in their offices. Bill Gates slept underneath the table. Mark Zuckerberg started in his family's garage. If you look at Steve Jobs, I mean, all of these guys started off in efficiencies, garages, things like that. So why is it that we believe we've got to go stay and live in some sort of luxury apartment place or we have to buy a brand new F-350 or whatever, you know, Yukon or Cadillac Escalade or whatever vehicles it are. And then we don't have money to be able to pay for learning, pay for hiring people to help us or consultants or assistants or, you know, because we're spending our money in other areas that we can reduce significantly. And then we, we have the ability to be able to invest in ourselves and our businesses. Number six, get lucky. You have to take at bats in order to hit a home run. So you have to try and fail, rinse and repeat. Remember, in business, and again, this is another Mark Cuban quote, you only have to be lucky once. All the other times where you tried won't matter. All the stories that I shared to you today about the times where I lost money or I was taken advantage of or people stole from me, it doesn't matter at this point. No one's asking me that question today. Um, so, again, you've got to try. You've got to fail. You've got to do it again. You've got to get up. You've got to pick up. In order to get lucky, you've got to take some at bat. So I need you guys to get out there and start swinging. Number seven, read. Find a topic of interest and read everything about it. I promise you, whatever industry you're looking at getting into, whatever marketplace you're looking at getting into, whatever product you're looking at selling, whatever service you're looking at providing, read about it. Read what are the top people doing? How are they doing it? What's the new technology coming out? How are people applying it? If you read five books on any topic, you're an expert. I've got a video where you talk about that all the time. The rest of the world is feeding their mind with junk food, as Jim likes to say. And by the way, Audible and YouTube count. As long as you're learning and expanding your mental faculty. Um, like right now, um, you know, I told you I was reading Genghis Khan. I'm studying Western philosophy. So again, I've got physical books. I have audio books. I've got Amazon Kindle. It just depends on where I'm at, if I'm driving. Um, but there's not a time where I'm in my car where I'm listening to music. I'm actually studying all the time. I'm listening to podcasts, and I'm constantly educating myself. So make sure you guys uh, really focus on reading. Writing. One of the podcasters that I like to listen to, his name is James Altucher. And James Altucher, he recommends writing down 10 ideas per day to start making sure you utilize your idea muscle. Um, and I went through this exercise with a friend of mine where I had her write down 10 ideas for vacations she wanted to go on or 10 ideas for places that you want to visit. But try that exercise, you know, writing down 10 ideas. Maybe it's 10 ideas for things that you want to do, activities. Uh, again, like I said, places you want to go, um, people you want to help, 
ways to give back, things that you want to serve, 10, 10 ideas, 10 things that you would do if you had a million dollars today, 10 things that you would do if you, if you were where you want to be five years from now. Start using your idea muscles. So um, this is a technique that James, I mean, this guy writes out really good, strong blog posts all the time. And so when he writes this stuff down, I mean, he... He's, he's really passionate about it. He shares his stories of wanting to commit suicide and how he overcame it. But he talks about writing down 10 ideas a day. So try that to help work your idea muscle out. Practice. What I mean by practice, practice maintaining good habits. Millionaires, billionaires, athletes, top performers are all very disciplined. And they exercise extreme control over their daily routines. Start with little habits like morning exercise and build upon that. One of the things, and yeah, Natasha, there's a lot of books on YouTube. Oh, yeah, I've read, oh, man, I've read a lot of books on YouTube as well. Um, Think and Grow Rich and those books. There's a lot of audible books on YouTube that are free. But, you know, practice with good habits. Um, You know, one of the things that I do is, like I said, when I know, and this is, and I'm pretty sure it's the same for all of you. If you exercise, then you're likely to eat healthy. Um, if you eat healthy, then you feel better, you have more energy. So it just kind of builds upon itself. So start off by doing those, those daily routines, those daily disciplines, and practicing good habits. And number 10, guard your time. Time, for most people, is treated like a commodity. But really, it's a perishable asset. It's the only thing in the world that we can't replace. It's funny, uh, someone told me the other day uh, that I was egotistical for setting my phone on do not disturb mode until 9 a.m. But that's why I'm a serial entrepreneur, and this person is trying to get to the point where I'm at. You know, I make people respect my time, which includes family, friends, associates, everyone. I treat my, I, I you know, you treat your time with no regard, and you'll find yourself being taken care of by the government the rest of your life. So I guard my time. In fact, the only way I'm able to even be able to do these videos for you guys is because I guard my time so sacredly. If I allow the emails, the phone calls, um, the text messages, if I allow all that stuff, those notifications to constantly come to me, there's no way that I can sit back and work on new ideas, new concepts, and be able to deliver value and continually bring you guys these types of messages. So guard your time with your life. In fact, Evita Patron, Peron said, time is my greatest enemy as she died at 33 to the age of cancer. So now I want to leave you guys with a final message. Um, and I thought that this was, um, this, this story, the parable that, uh, the Dr. Great Dr. King talked about, um, I thought it was very fitting for what's going on today. A lot of times we, and, and, and Ray Dalio in the book that I read recently, he said that he, if you ever look at some of the billionaires, you notice that they study history and I've, and I've, and lately I've started studying history because I found that. Again, like people say, there's nothing new under the sun. Life repeats itself. So if you start to study history, you'll realize that, I'll give a great example, cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, um, If you know, is to me, once things start getting down to the lower ranks of people, then you're already too late. You're already on the back end of the swing of the momentum. If you had done it five years ago, then you'd, pro- you'd be a multi-minute today. But to come in now and when my friends that are, making 10 bucks an hour buying cryptocurrency and telling me about um, Bitcoin, then um, I know it's already too late and I've missed the uh, I've missed the bubble on that. But that's the same thing with uh, all the instances that's happening in life. The same thing, if we had actually sat back and studied the real estate market, we could have foresaw that a crash was going to happen. But what happens to most of us is if, if something didn't happen in our generation, then we and we didn't read about it in, in previous times, then we don't have any experiences to draw from and that. So um, I want to share this story with you so that you guys can have some experiences to draw from and make a connection to where we're at today. And the late Dr. King Jr. said that freedom is never gained without a determined struggle coupled with a willingness to suffer and sacrifice. Let me uh, repeat that again because I thought that was a very good point. Freedom is never gained without a determined struggle coupled with a willingness to suffer and sacrifice. And so in the story, he talks about the uh, parable where Moses escaped Egypt on the way to the promised land. And I would compare that to what we're facing today, which is where it's the challenge of you guys choosing entrepreneurship versus the comfort and security or false security of a job. 
And so in the story, they talk about, and again, I'm not no theologian, and I'm definitely not a preacher, but I, I just thought it applied to us. In the story, there were three groups of people. And there was the first group of people that they wanted to go back to Egypt because they heard that there were giants in the land. And so those remind me of the people who stepped out there. They saw my videos. They inquired about the process. And you realize it wouldn't be such an easy way. So you decided to run back. And, and so those people, they quit before they ever got started. And though they suffer greatly at their jobs, their fear of hurt, uncertainty, potential suffering perpetuates much greater than the opportunity to win, which is getting through that maze to get to the promised land. And then there was the second group of people. And they wanted the freedom, but they didn't want to go through the sacrifice of what it takes to leave. So they just wanted to hang around. They wanted someone to do the work for them. They wanted someone to basically guide them through the maze. So, you, you know, those people, they formed a corporation. They did all the steps. They got registered. Um, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Just remove the walls. That's right. That's what the people say. Just remove the walls and let me walk straight across. Uh, unfortunately, it's not like that. So then there was the other group of people. And like I said, you know, you, you, you did everything. You have registered. Maybe you're certified, but you're not talking to anyone. You're not bidding on jobs because you're afraid. You don't meet with organizations or advisors or associates because it takes courage to make those phone calls. You know what to do. You've taken the courses. You know, you've talked to me, but you find every reason to book to do something else more urgent at the time. You volunteer to take your kids and your neighbor's kids and your nephews and nieces to games and events and shows, all of it as a distraction from doing the important task. Um, so, you know, and then there's the third group of people. And that's the group of people who said, yes, there are giants in the land. It is a maze, but we believe that we can defeat them to get to the other side. And I, I knew when I stepped out there that, again, I was blind to what I was getting involved in. But I knew that the promise, when they sold me on the promise and how great that was, I knew that if I could make it through, that it, the rewards would be that much sweeter. And so we know you know, those group of people which I'm in is we know that there's a competition out there, but in spite, you still persist, pursue, and those people will ultimately persevere. And so we all know that the promised land exists and there are things that we must go to to go to the other side. So my goal and doing everything that I say is, is to show you how myself, once a shepherd boy, grew up in poverty stricken ghouls, Florida, and I defeated the giants and made it out on the other side. And not only did I make it out, I'm reaching back to lend a helping hand to those who want to join me. So, but as good as my heart wants to be, time too is my enemy. I can't shoot your bows. I can't run with your feet or duck with your knees. I can't stand with your legs. I can't see with your eyes, nor can I scream with your mouth. But if you have a willingness to suffer and sacrifice mixed with determined struggle, then you too can gain your ultimate freedom. I can assure you that fighting this battle is no more difficult than the current fight for survival that you're already in. So who wants to join me? Who wants to be a part of that group? And so that's the message I want to leave you guys today. I want you to know that, yes, um, we understand what we're up against. And we're aware of that. But seeing myself, seeing the people in our group, seeing the people that I reference in my stories, the stories that I share with you, if you take, if you go through and you and you go through the actual that webinar, you'll see I share examples of my friend who's got the GSA billion dollar contact. Uh, you see my friend who's you know has got every freaking luxury car that you can have. He's got a hundred you know he's he's more of a showboat type of guy. But if you see that these people are everyday average ordinary people like the shepherd boy, and that they were able to make it through, that should be able to help you guys better feel like it's possible for everyone out there. And so when I um. When I saw this whole tax reform thing, it really uh, it mo it motivated, inspired me to kind of you know push that message. And as I was listening through messages for my own sake and for my own sanctity, and to help me in my journey get you know push beyond the things that I'm doing, I thought it would be an appropriate message to share with you guys today. So that's uh that's the message. That's what I want to share with you guys today. I really hope you enjoyed it. I missed everyone out there. Um, I do have some new upcoming messages that I'm working on, and so I will try and make things uh, relevant and applicable to what's happening out there in the economy. Um, and so that way, you know, I can kind of tie it in, and hopefully one day, one of these messages will resonate with you, and it gets you to get off the couch, make the phone call, take the next step, go to the red light. Don't worry about starting. Wait, don't worry about all the lights having to be green before you start. Just get started take the steps um, because we have 
support team. We have support people out there. Uh, you know, we've got some very active members in our Facebook group. They're helping when I'm not available. You know that I'm busy. I'm trying to respond to as many people as it is. And so, um, I, you know, I, I want you guys to know that because I truly do want more people um, not having to worry about these things and, and deal with these daily issues. And like I told you in some of my previous videos, um, the, the stronger that you become, um, the more successful that you become, then the more likely it is that you're able to make an impact on your friends, your family, and everyone out there in the world. So um, I'm not actually taking questions today. I do want to say hi to everybody. Um, I am happy that you guys joined me tonight. I'm not taking questions, but thank you for joining me. Thanks for watching this video today, and uh, I'll see you probably the next time something comes up. All right, guys. Thanks. I'll talk to you soon.